Hey guys, what's up? It's Pseudo Pluto here, and if you didn't know already, uh, I'm a big fan of Kobo e-readers. Uh, I have one right here. This is my Kobo Clara HD. Let me actually switch to webcam so you guys can see it. Uh, can you guys see that? Well, my webcam is not that great. But yeah, uh, one of the reasons why I got the Kobo instead of the Kindle was that I, I heard that the Kobo e-readers were more customizable, and they supported EPUBs a lot better than the Amazon Kindles. And so I wanted to share today uh, some mods and tools based around the Kobo e-readers that makes life a lot better. Uh, and the the tools and uh, utilities I will be going over today were made graciously by uh, Patrick Gaskin, or uh, what's his name? Geek. 1011. And basically, I want to go over uh, Kobo firmware downloads, Keypubify, and then touch base a little bit about Kobo patch and uh, nickel menu. And so, the first one I actually want to go over is Keypubify. And so, you might actually have this problem when you start using your Kobo e reader, and it's that uh, sometimes when you import an EPUB, like you load it over USB, uh, onto the device, uh, the, the text formatting will be weird. And this is especially true for, I found with like light novels and stuff, uh, where the locale might not be uh, uh, like uh, EN US, like English United States. It might be like uh, Japan, and then it's actually like English text because it's translated. And so I found tools like uh, Calibre and Keepopify uh, translate the EPUBs into something called uh, KEPUBs. And um, yeah, enhanced uh, KEPUB format for Kobo e-readers. And so I think it's an extension about the, uh, um, regarding the EPUB format. And it basically adds more text formatting hints and stuff like that for the Kobo e-readers to, to display the book. And so you can use Calibre, but you can also use this command line tool called uh, Keepofi. And actually there's a web version now too, where you can just drag and drop and then you can have all these uh, um, options for how the book is formatted. But I actually like the uh, text tool because, um, sorry, the command line tool because, uh, and you'll get these three over here. Because you can run it like, uh, if you have all your uh, EPUBs in one like library location, you can just run keypubify on that entire uh, directory and it'll generate all the keypub files for you that you can then transfer over. Uh, to your uh, e-reader. And you also have CoverGen, which is also a tool to uh, generate the the um, the covers of the books based off of like the, the EPUB for, uh, for what uh, shows up on like your e-reader's home screen, kind of like this. Um, I'll swap it here again. As you can see, I have like my books cover um, on the e-reader, right? And so that helps with like the, the, the sleep screen and then also the, the home screen for showing books. And then you have series meta, which is basically, it allows um, keep a, uh, the, the Koba e-reader to like, if you have a series of book, like the Harry Potter series, right? And if the uh, EPUB has that metadata in there saying that, okay, this is book like three out of seven in a series, it'll allow you to order the series and also to um, show the series as like a collection uh, within the e-reader. Instead of just like categorizing by like author, right? You categorize by like series and have uh, it be in one place. And so basically to get started with this, it's, um, you can either use a web tool, which is, um, I think it's try, you can use it here but, but I would download it. So I'm on Fedora, which means I just take these um, these binary files. It's a Go program with all the dependencies compiled into one just binary file that can run on any 64-bit uh, operating system. Or ARM, 64 ARM, right? Anything flies. You just get that uh, binary file and then you copy it over to um, .bin or whatever you have like executables loaded onto your path in your bash C. And so after that, I have these uh, these commands loaded up, and hopefully I have it here. I don't. But yeah, now I have Keepubify here, as well as CoverGen. 
and then uh, series meta. So actually these two, uh, series meta uh, and um, coverage in, you'll actually need to have your e-reader plugged in in order to run it because it modifies all the information on the device itself. Uh, so basically what you do is, um, okay, you take your e-reader, right? You wake it up and turn your passcode, right? You unplug the USB cable, replug it in, it'll get a computer detected. You can see the logo right there. You click connect, you'll get this black screen on. And then as you can see here, the, the device is mounted um, as like a USB drive. And so once you do that, you can um, run these command line tools. So I'll do cover gen. Where is it? Right, and I can do um, cover gen, and then I can set all these options. Um, I'll just do this, right? And I'll say, okay, skipped all these uh, different uh, covers, like thumbnails generated. And so this is a cool utility. Same thing with series meta. Um, series meta, you just run it. And it'll basically import all your EPUBs, look for that series metadata, and then um, like collate them together if they're part of the same series. And so, yeah, uh, three updated, 127 without metadata. And then as you can see, all my EPUBs here are converted uh, .kepub .epub. And so that's the keypub format for the Kobo e-readers. And there's actually a cool tool, and we'll get over it later. Um, about um, uh, to, to not have to run this utility, it will be like a mod for the device that you load onto itself. And then uh, you don't have to run the series meta command. You just let the device update itself um, with the series information. But yeah, for the keypub, uh, keypubify, it is pretty simple. Um, you, you have this help command, right? You have these options that you can do. I just usually use default. And then uh, update uh, in place. So like these are good for um, if you already have like a library of EPUBs and you know when you convert them, you can do in place and you can do update. Uh, so don't reconvert and uh, don't add the convert suffix and um, basically like create a separate file for it. Um, and then basically you you do like keypubify uh, star.epub, so like this. This is how I usually use it, start at EPUB, to wherever you have your EPUB files, and then it'll generate all the keypub files, which you then copy over to your device, just by dragging and dropping into this um, Koba reader uh, directory. So yeah, so that's that's uh, keypub file. Um, I won't show you with an actual file. Um, if you want that, I can show you. But very useful tool, instead of having to like install Calibra like through Flatpak or um, install it through like the like the repositories. You just have like this nice um, single like binary that you just download from the internet, and boom, you can uh, convert all your EPO files to be friendly with the uh, the Kobo e-reader. Now this is also a cool thing from the same guy, uh, Patrick Askin, and um, so this is basically um, all of the the firmware files for the e-readers. And you can download download them and install them yourself. And this is useful because it shows here the um, the matrix, right? So for example, I have the Kobo Clara HD, and I just want to make sure I'm recording my screen. I am okay. Yeah, so I have the Kobo Clara HD directly from Kobo, right? And so I'm running an old version of the firmware. And so, but um, these different vendors, right? Um, Beta, FNAC, Best Buy Canada, uh, Walmart Canada, they're running the latest version of the firmware. So what I can do basically is go to Koba Clara HD. I can download uh, this update file and I already did. Uh, I will show you in my downloads. Uh, I can extract it here and I have all this stuff, right? And then basically what I should do is copy, uh, go into here. I want to do show hidden files uh, and then go into Kobo. 
and then just paste it here, right? And then when I uh, eject the Koba e-reader, it'll update itself and reboot. And then boom, I'm having like the newest firmware version. And yeah, that, that whole idea of just like dropping a Kobo root uh, tar, um, tar zip is like very common with the rest of the mods and uh, patches for the Kobo e-readers. Uh, I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, for example, here, release notes, not that, uh, getting started. Uh, for nickel series, right? I ran a mod for the Kobo firmware, nickel series. So you click this, right? You download the, the same thing and you drop this kobo.tarzip in the kobo folder and then you unmount uh, the e-reader and then it'll update itself with the mod. And then you don't have to run the series meta command that I showed you guys. You just let the device update itself. Cool. And so on the topic of mods, uh, once you install like the latest firmware, you can do uh, kobo patches, which is basically a bunch of um, tweaks that you can enable for the firmware that you installed to your e-reader that'll do stuff is like uh, both page turn buttons go next or um, prompt before updating firmware. Uh, you can also do um, enable old keyboard, uh, disable wish list. I actually don't have any of the mods enabled because I can't be bothered to go through and try each one and see if I actually need it. Um, my experience with the Kobo Clara HD has been pretty uh, great. I have no like real wants, uh, but there's a lot of stuff that you can go through and see if you want to try it. Um, and if you do, uh, just try it, uh, reflash your device. And if you don't like it, just disable it. I'll show you how to do that actually. Um, so I've downloaded the Kobo patch, I've extracted it. And basically all you do is in the source, you want to place your uh, Kobo update.zip in here. Then each of these YAML files is what you can modify to um, enable a mod. So I'll go to nickel, which is the e-reader on the Kobo device. And I can uh, enable mod by like selecting this to yes, saying uh, reduce top and bottom page spacer, right? And then when I run this command here, Kobo patch.sh, I'll generate a new, um, uh, a new firmware update file basically that include all the patches and the mods that I want. And so I'll do the same thing where I take in this out directory, uh, I'll have those files which include like the Kobo root.tarzip and all those other files and I'll just copy and paste that into the dot Kobo uh, directory here. And then uh, unmount my device, I'll reboot and then it'll apply all those patches. So I don't have any real recommendations based off of here because I didn't have anything that I wanted and I haven't gone through this entire list yet basically to see if there's like anything uh, I specifically want. Uh, but there's an option there just in case you're feeling like you're missing something. And finally, we have this last one, which is nickel menu. And this is a pretty cool one too. What it does is it's a similar mod, but it'll basically update your um, homepage based off your configuration to add a new menu that allows you to do like all these like developer tool stuff. Uh, imagine like the developer tools menu on Android. Uh, this is basically what this is. And so you can do uh, cool stuff like Telnet, Reboot, USB connection, web browser. Um, the only problem I have with this is again, it's a bit dense to get into. And a lot of this stuff I don't really feel like um, I need. But if you're like a power user or um, you're like a developer, I'm, I'm guessing this stuff will be useful. Stuff like they show in the screenshot here, right? Where it's like reboot, USB connection, uh, telnet, et cetera, et cetera. It's a very similar um, mod installation where you just download the Kobo root.tarzip, the image into .kobo, and then um, eject the e-reader and then let it install the, the firmware image. And then you do um, this configuration file. And here's an example of stuff you can add, right? So you specify the menu location and then you can specify the menu items. Um, like you can do Kobo open, like something like this. Um, and see that like this stuff is just really dense to get into. And just a quick browse through this shows that I don't really care for any of this stuff, but the option is there if you want to. And that's the main thing I want to get at with this video is that if you buy a Kobo e-reader uh, instead of like a, a Kindle, 
you'll get a pretty good device that you can like sideload books onto. You don't have to like do this weird thing of like emailing yourself like uh, .mobi files. Um, you'll have like good text rendering, especially if you use uh, Keypubify. Uh, where is it? Other stuff. Uh, especially if you use like Keypubify to convert into the Kobo EPUBs, which have like the special formatting. Um, yeah, you could use your own books with their own like good formatting. And you'll have all these mods and patches that you can do to really customize the e-reader and make it your own, which I think is really cool. Um, it's, bas it's basically like the Windows versus uh, Linux of e-readers, right? This is why the Kobo e-readers are so good. And really shout out to, um, to, to Patrick um, for making all this stuff. Um, for what I can see... Um, uh, from the forums, like he's like one of like the main developers doing cool stuff, right? And his Keypubify is like the only real alternative to Calibre for uh, converting EPUB files into KEPUBs. So shout out to him. But yeah, hopefully this was like a cool video for you guys and you learned something new. And if you're on the fence of buying like a Kobo e-reader versus a uh, Kindle, this might tip um, your decision one way or another of like how customizable a Kobo e-reader is. Uh, compared to a Kindle or something like that. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something new, um, especially if you didn't know about uh, Keepofi, right? It might it might really enhance your experience of your e-reader um, if like you're kind of frustrated with like the text formatting and like weird spacing and stuff like that. But yeah, this is Pluto out. See you guys later. Bye.